It's a lot of background work to it, working up to what you see on stage. Drag's an artistic transformation. A lot of people don't understand that. They see you on stage, they think you live that way 24 seven. What we do here is truly an art form and no one does it the same. Welcome, welcome to Talbot. When you leave, you will have a new appreciation for what we do. Music has started. Okay. It's your time. I would spend a year getting a costume ready for the Grand Masquerade. And that's how I first started. Of course, we're talking 1991, 92. In 96, I was dared to go do an open stage show at Club Cabaret. And then that's when I started doing shows. Um, here would be a good one. This here is actually a headdress. I would not be able to wear this at most any other bar. You physically couldn't stand up in it. These are all ostrich. This, um, this is a mix of, actually a mix of um, genuine rhinestones and then some acrylic. But this here alone, I've probably got 800 to 1,000 in it. And I'll never get that out of it, so. <laughs> there we go. And with that same enthusiasm, please welcome to the stage. She is the fresh and the fruity, and her name is Montana Melons. I thought it'd be cooler in here. <laughs> Her twin said, try this robe on. And I tried this robe on and I said, why do I need to try this robe on? And, she, and her twin said, because I saw your husband in it last week. I wanted to see what you looked like in it. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're telling tales. Being transgender and gay, it, isn't, uh, it really isn't a choice. You just can't fight it. I finally reached a point where I had to do it because it's what was normal to me from the time I was three or four. If, if I didn't transition, I probably would have ended up a suicide. Are you okay? I mean, it would be nice if you say, I don't even remember it, you just turned it in. I've been doing this since I was about five or six. I just didn't have a name for it. I got suspended in high school for a fight. RuPaul was on MTV. I'd never even seen or heard of RuPaul. And that's when I knew that I wanted to go into the field of female impersonation. When I decided to go back to school, I was weighing out the cost of living and my education in Vegas. And a friend of mine just said, hey, what about Indy? I could go to school, get my education, and remain independent and uh, still stay in my chosen career. Transgendered queens are like myself and Sage. We live as women. Boy queens are like Asia. We were both in this little tiny space for 13 years together. It's a lot. Yeah, he's really cool. I actually lived an extremely conservative upbringing. No television, no music. Once I got out on my own, all music was new to me. A lot of things were new. One of my very first photo projects was Asia. He was very calm, intelligent, um, he had an intention. I was like, this guy has a heart. I always really liked drag as soon as I was exposed to like the live show. 
After graduating, I was like, I want to be involved, but not a queen. Like, I don't want to perform. But I knew I had like a medium that could still be involved because they want to be seen. I want to make an image. They're like the perfect model. After being at Talbot for almost 13 years, doing 12 to 18 numbers a week, you get into a rhythm, but you also get burnt out. People come to see a show, and a lot of that for me was the costumes and the fact that I'm six foot four without heels. Drake has always been big in Indiana, which I've been beyond blessed to have Talbot Street because I wouldn't have the success I have without that just because of the venue that it offers because you don't get that big stage spotlight. They invested in the show. I would say I live my life backwards. I didn't start off doing what I wanted to do. I ended up doing what I wanted to do, so. There's no end goal except like it's really fulfilling personally and creatively to be doing it. I don't believe in luck, but it feels awesome that what I'm doing creatively can coincide with what they're doing creatively. It's exciting doing it. Like, I'm going to school to be a social worker because I don't want this to be the definition of who I am. The only thing that I've done in my life, but this is what I love the most. And it pays the bills too. <laughs> Pretty freaking good, I'll tell you that. <laughs> they don't have to tip you, or as we call it, picking cabbage. It's a connection, and that's part of the drag. It's a job. Yeah. I enjoy it. Drag is a smaller scale than like mainstream, whatever it may be. Writers or actors or musicians, but it means art. If you want to do it, that's valid enough. Who cares if you're like doing it in your living room or if you're doing it on TV or doing it on a stage? Being on the stage and letting that light hit you and the music starts and the roar of the crowd, it's addictive. Everyone wants to be a star at some point, you know? In this little world, this is our Hollywood, and we get to be the stars. The working up to it, the process of it, and then giving that to the public and getting their reaction back. It's a lot of work. It's harder to do the older you get. <laughs> and you get to play dress up and get paid for it and have a good time, so. That's drag for me. <laughs>